the church in America is going to suffer so terribly. And we laugh now, but they will come after us. They will come after our children. They will close the net around us while we are playing soccer mom and soccer dad. Or we are arguing over so many little things and mesmerized by so many trinkets. The net even now is closing around you and your children and your grandchildren, and it does not cause you to fear. You will be isolated from society as has already happened. Anyone who tries to run for office who actually believes the Bible will be considered a lunatic until finally we are silenced. We will be called things that we're not and persecuted not for being followers of Christ, but for being radical fundamentalists who do not know the true way of Christ, which of course is love and tolerance. You'll go down as the greatest bigots and haters of mankind in history. That Paul Washer clip confirms something that I have been thinking about for a while now. Is the American church ready for what's coming and what's already here? You know, other countries, you have real Christians dying for the word of their testimony and faith. They're, they're dying every single day. I consider these people to be the true martyrs. I mean, we got people being shot and killed and their family members hunted for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. While over here, there are luxuries we have the privilege of enjoying that others just simply do not have the privilege of enjoying. Now, this isn't a call to have you volunteer yourself to be just like a martyr. I'm not sitting up here suggesting anyone be like, it's not right, Lord. I should be over there dying with them. That, that's not what I'm calling for anybody to do. I believe we have to recognize the seriousness of this persecution and be about our father's business while we are afforded these faith freedoms, all these luxuries that we do get to experience and take advantage of. We're, we're, we're in a blessed position right now. I think We've gotten way too soft to the point of if Google, of all people, was to shut our accounts down, we wouldn't even know what to do with ourselves. So if we was to lose all of our Google access, Google Docs to our accounts that sign into the things, if we was to lose our digital access, we would be freaking out. I personally believe that understanding the supernatural realm will only secure and strengthen the foundation you have with your relationship with Jesus Christ because you'll begin to make these connections between how the heavenly realm and the natural world interact to create the unexplainable things you witness in your daily life. Man, you know something? I asked my pastor, why is it that these countries experience these extreme, extremely deathly persecutions while we in America are not going through these, these kind of executions, these, these extreme persecutions? His response was very informative and enlightening. It was that we're, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and the spiritual rulers in high places. I guess a response to be somewhat more expected. But he also added the reason that most of these third world countries experience such spiritual oppression where it's displayed through political turmoil and their climate is because of how these locations are possibly governed by some fallen angelic principality where their political structure is usurped to the point of implementing a socialistic or communistic rule. I recall that in Daniel chapter 10, there was a situation where an angel of the Lord gives an account of being blocked for 120 days by the prince of the kingdom of Persia from delivering a message to the prophet Daniel. Wherever spiritual power this was, it had enough dominance over its domain to stop this messenger. And it took the archangel Michael to assist the angel to actually reach Daniel. You should actually read that chapter for yourself to see what I'm talking about. The reason I bring this up is to emphasize that there was a specific spiritual ruler over the land of Persia who I imagine had a huge influence over the king of Cyrus at the time, the human nobility over Persia. So we see in the earlier verses in Daniel that there is a physical king who allows his God-given domain to be usurped by this seducing spirit who held a former rank in the spiritual dimension. Now we see this happening right now in America where our leaders are, what's a good way of saying this? that they're deceived by these principalities, or maybe not. But personally, I honestly believe that these people know the Luciferian nature of these otherworldly entities and don't really care because in exchange, these leaders receive control and power for their dominion over the earth, or so they think. If you look at the 700 Cubs back catalog of episodes, you'll find that there was an episode where they had a gentleman by the name of John Ramirez talk about astral projecting into neighborhoods when he was involved in Satanism through Santeria. In his astraling, 
he talked about speaking curses over specific neighborhoods. But man, something sobering and very empowering, he said, that reflected to me the true power of Christianity. And that's was he actually mentioned that when coming across a neighborhood that had real Christians praying on the street corner for their environment, that he couldn't do anything. He couldn't speak any curses into that neighborhood because that particular space, that location was spiritually shielded in the name of the Lord. John became a high priest in Palo Mayambe, a form of African spiritualism. As he became more powerful, John took warfare seriously. The devil told me that I had to go into the neighborhood in the spirit round in order to weaken it in the natural. Whatever you kill in the spirit round, you can kill in the natural. So I will leave my body home and I should project myself into a different borough, different region, different states, different countries. And as I follow the neighborhood, I would speak curses into the neighborhood, speak things that I wanted to happen into the neighborhood. Sometimes I will go into neighborhoods and I see this group of people in the spirit line in the corner praying, holding hands, heads bowed, praying up a storm. And there was no accomplishment in that neighborhood. In that neighborhood was sanctified, blessed through prayer. There was, you couldn't touch it. But the other neighborhoods, it was party time. That really, really gave me a lot of hope and really showed me the power of God. If you're coming from, if you're giving an account from a former Satanist who actually talked about his experience in trying to speak curses and how to actually block that. I also remember on the Prophecy Club, we had Stephen Dollars talk about how he was also sending curses. He was a former Satanist too, and he was sending curses out to certain people and those the demons would return and actually say, don't you dare send me back over there again with those real Christians. So when you come across real Christians, not people that have a zeal of Christianity, wearing crosses, clothing or whatever, but you have spiritually grounded Christians, the, the powers of darkness, the rulers of darkness can't do anything. They're nullified. Yes, I got to tell you this, because if, if you're born again Christian, you're spirit filled. I mean, you need to know how powerful the name of Jesus is. You do, you do. You need to know about the blood of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we summoned up a spirit, and the reason we did that is one of the one night, one of the witches came in, one of the young witches came in, and she said, there's a lady down the street who's a Christian, and she's, she's threatening to expose us, threatening to expose our group. And I said, well, we've got the police department, the sheriff's department. I mean, there's no problem there. She goes, no, you don't understand. She's going to tell my mother. I said, oh, we can't have that. She said, no, she tells my mother. She said, my mother will make me quit. I said, oh, okay. Well, what do you want us to do? Well, let's just hurt her a little bit. Let's put a hex on her. Not a big one, just a little one. I said, oh, you mean send something after her just to make something happen to let her know we're there? She said, yes. Okay, we can do that. So what we did is we got a circle and we summoned up a spirit named Astaroth. Now, uh, this is supposed to be one of the hierarchy of the demons. And over in the side of the room, this orange cloud started appearing. And as it appeared, there started appearing a face out of that cloud. And guess what face it was? The wolf man. The thing that I'd been afraid of ever since I was a little kid. So I'm sitting there trying to make people think that, hey, I'm cool, you know, nothing wrong with me. I didn't want to show fear in front of my people, you know, and my followers. So all of a sudden, this, this cloud started appearing, and we told it what we wanted it to do. We sent it off, and it was gone. We came out five minutes later, came out of the circle, everybody talking, having a good time. We were getting ready to break the meeting up. All of a sudden, this orange cloud started appearing in the side of the room again. And I looked at it, and I said, oh, everybody back in the circle, quick. We got back in the circle, and this, cl this cloud appeared again. This time, this thing was in a rage. I mean, it was angry. And it spoke to me just like I'm speaking to you tonight. I mean that audibly. And it said, don't you ever send me after a Christian again. And I'm telling you, I mean, that's, that's the power. This, this woman must have had the blood of Jesus all over her. You know, must have had the blood of Jesus all over her. Must have even, even anointed her house or had protective angels outside or something, you know. I think that was probably my biggest turning point. Now, I believe because we are allowed these faith freedoms to express our beliefs and pray without retaliation, it's the reason why we're not in a position as, say, these third world countries are actually in at this moment. But don't get it twisted. As Pastor Washer said earlier, that net is closing. Soon we won't be able to freely play soccer mom or dad with a peace of mind, coasting along life like we've been doing all along. 
learning about end time prophecy, the supernatural, how all these things work is not a waste of time on the church. We have too many churches today only concerned with the day to day living. I, I mean, I personally get it. I'm not faulting anybody for it. We live in a moment. We live in the now, in the present. A lot of people have a, even Christians have a self-centered worldview. Everything is focused on their well-being. All right. I personally get it. But with that said, still, I beg to differ that learning about the supernatural when it comes to God and his heavenly creations, both good and bad, is essential to enhancing your belief in how God can work supernaturally in your life. So, for example, if you're learning and reading books such as The Final Nephilim and Judgment of the Nephilim by Ryan Peterson, you can actually gain a better understanding in terms of who God is, to be honest with you. Because if you take the flood account and you think God just destroyed people because God just wanted to destroy people because humans are evil, you, you have a different, you, you don't have a complete, how should I say, belief system on that. You don't have a complete understanding and knowing that there were entities that existed on the earth that shouldn't even been here. And because God loved the creation, he created God loved the creation that he made so much. He wanted to protect it at all costs, which is why it was necessary to have the flood in the first place. But a lot of people and pastors don't really teach you that other aspect when it comes to the flood narrative. Not considering the supernatural in terms of how these principalities actually work and leads to other misunderstandings in terms of how the devil, how Lucifer actually operates. Understanding if he's here, if he's in a bottomless pit. How is he operating on this earth today in 2023 right now at this moment in time? That misunderstanding is also causing people to have a very misunderstood way of living at this point in time. If you want to think that the devil is controlling your every move, then I believe you will be sadly mistaken as his assumed omnipotence is exposed and broken down right here in this video.